Okay, so I'm currently running Debian 11 with the KDE Plasma desktop interface and I really like it. I really like the way it works. It's very logical. It's nice and fast. Um, the only thing I'm struggling with at the moment is setting the time zone. For some reason it seems to be locking me out. But I'm going to try and get over that and just show you how to install this and get it up and running uh, with Conkey. Uh, also with P-Sensor as well so you can check the temperature of everything. Although mine's running well now that I've got a fan on it. Okay, so first up, let's go to the Orange Pi 5 website and click on that. Click on Downloads and then scroll down. I think this is still not available, this one. Yeah, so we're still waiting for their version of Android with Play Store and also a desktop environment. But if it doesn't come soon, I might install a desktop environment and try and get the Play Store on the standard Android version. But for this, I'm using Debian. So if we go to Downloads, just check that it's not a later version than I had. So my version's from the 9th of December, and I'm pretty sure that's what I've got downloaded already. So Debian's, yeah, Debian server. So this is the version I was using. I've tried all these other versions um, to be able to install into Ubuntu and also Debian with XFCE. And I couldn't get any of them to work as well as this one uh, with the KDE Plasma desktop environment. So that's what I'm going to use again. So open up Raspberry Pi Imager, which you can get for Windows, Linux and Mac OS. Choose OS and go to use custom. Then you can see I've got all my operating systems here, but I need to expand this to see which one is which. So Debian server. This is the one without a graphical user interface. Uh, so let's hit open. When you initially download it, you'll have to unzip it, and that'll obviously vary on different machines. Uh, so choose storage. Oh, I need to put my SD card in. Once that's inserted, select that and hit write. And yes. Okay, so that's all done. So we can now eject the SD card. Pop it into the orange Pi and switch on. Okay, so as you can see, not a lot going on here. So let's install NeoFetch. sudo apt install NeoFetch. And the password is orange Pi, all one word. And let's launch that by typing in NeoFetch. And you can see that we're running at 1.8 gig. It's a four gig orange Pi 5. Debian 11 Bullseye, but it is running a very old kernel, 5.10. So Debian 11 on my Raspberry Pi 4 is running the kernel 5.15, so much newer. But let's do an update. sudo apt update. And you can see that some things aren't working at the moment, but we're not going to worry about that for now. So if I do sudo apt upgrade, and yes. Now let's check what time it's running with time, date, CTL, status, because I couldn't seem to set the time after I'd installed the operating system, so I'm gonna try and do it in terminal. So you can see the time zone is Asia, Shanghai. So let's list the time zones, and you can find your time zone from this list. So let's press Control C, and this is my time zone, Europe, London. Pop your password in. And this is what I've been getting before. So it doesn't seem to allow me to do it. So I think it's going to be the same where it's not going to let me set my time zone. Yeah, access denied. I don't know why we haven't got access to the time zone. So let's install KDE Plasma anyway, uh, just to show you how the process works and hopefully someone will have a solution on how we can change that time zone. So sudo apt install task cell. And yes. Then sudo task cell. And there's loads of things you can choose to install on here. Uh, but I'm just going to go for KDE Plasma. So if I highlight it, press space, press tab, and then enter. And this takes a while before it got stuck on about 82%. Hopefully this will go all the way through. Okay, so this is where it got stuck before. It does seem to be going faster than it went last time. So it got to 82% and it seemed to get stuck on libpulse, which it does seem to have slowed. Okay, so I've waited a while, it's definitely stopped, it's not doing anything. So I'm going to try Control C, uh, which doesn't work. So maybe Control Alt Delete. Yeah. 
So as you can see, we still have no graphical user interface, but uh, I fixed it last time with sudo dpkg dash dash configure dash a and yes. And every time it stops, I ticked yes and yes. And this goes on for quite some time. It's definitely more sketchy uh, using Linux on these rock chips uh, at the moment. Just, just the way they set up and everything are nowhere near as stable as a Raspberry Pi. Uh, obviously, we've got more power from the processor, but it's much better supported on a Pi. Uh, especially, down, we're not going to have um, GPU support in this. But if you want to be able to run a desktop operating system and do things like uh, office tasks, web browsing, file management, all of that sort of stuff, I found it works absolutely fine for. Obviously, this is very early days for this device, and so things hopefully will improve as time goes on. Okay, so that's finished, so let's do reboot. Oh, no, reboot doesn't work. So, sudo shutdown dash h now. And I'll let it switch off, and then I'll switch it on again. Okay, so hopefully it's going to start KDE Plasma now. Looks like it is going to. Yeah. So same login, so orange pie. And we've got the standard interface. And if we press the Windows key, we get all the options come up. But also if we just start typing something. So if I started typing, say, Firefox, you can see that it comes up and we can launch things from here as well. So let's start the terminal. I'm going to change the password, actually. P-A-S-S-W-D and then pop in orange pie and then the new password and again just makes it a bit more secure uh, let's run the updates again and you can see some things failed to download but it does still, still seem to work fine so sudo apt upgrade is in here somewhere there it is Okay, so there's nothing else to update. So let's install pSensor. sudo apt install pSensor. And yes. And we can launch that either from here, uh, just by doing pSensor, or we can type pSensor in terminal. There you go pop it down here uh, and let's install Conkey but I'm going to do this from the discover store so you can see here this is the software center and if we type in Conkey here we have an install option and now that's there I can press the Windows key start typing Conkey and just click on it and that will give us a nice display of all sorts of things that are running and I usually drag this up so it matches it looks a bit neater but you can also do themes start typing theme and you can see global theme is on here and if we do get new global themes we can change the look of this and that's this is one of the things I really like about KDE Plasma uh, if I put in Windsor so I've got Windsor dark here let's hit install on that put the password in again let's close this bit down and use desktop layout from theme and apply so it starts to change some things over. It doesn't seem to do all of it straight away. And we can do all sorts of things like change the icons as well. Uh, and also get new icons. So there's some Windows ones I quite like, which I was using before. Yeah, it could have been this one. Let's try that one. And click on Use. And we can close that down. And you can see it's added it here. So let's apply that. And you can see the folder icon, the software store, various different things have changed. Now I also like to change the background to make it look a bit nicer. Um, so if you right click anywhere on the desktop and configure desktop and wallpaper. And just find something that you want. This was installed with the theme that I installed. So let's click on that and click apply. You can get new wallpapers and install any of the ones that are on there. Or just import your own. But I'll leave it as that because I think that looks pretty cool. Now one thing you'll notice is that if you now press the Windows key nothing happens um, so if you want to search for apps if I start typing Firefox for instance it comes up and I can do it that way but uh, I'd rather have it that I press the Windows key so if we right click on the application launcher 
configure application launcher, click on keyboard shortcuts, click on none, and do Alt, Windows, and F1. And then just pit, then just click apply and OK. And now if I press the Windows key, it comes up. So I've just restarted and I don't really like the login screen, so I'm going to change that. So just let's log in and also the splash screen. Oh, actually the splash screen's fine now. So that was changed with that WinSur theme. So if I press the Windows key, start typing theme, and we'll get a global theme. And one of these options, yeah, probably start up and shut down login screen. Splash screen, I think it's that one that I change. No, not splash screen. Login screen. So at the moment it's that one. I could just change it to that one. I think I'll just leave it as that one. Um, you can, again, get new themes on the Raspberry Pi. I have a lightning theme, which I really like when it's doing it. Uh, but let's just apply that. Now let's install some other programs. Uh, and I also want to get rid of uh, this web browser. I think I'll install Chromium. So let's go for the Discover Store. And you can find all sorts in here. So say you wanted um, Office applications. We can go to Applications and we can do Office. And you can see there's all sorts of things on here. So like LibreOffice Writer and you know PowerPoint equivalents and things like that. But let's just do Chromium for now. So if I go back, Chromium, and install. And while it's installing that, if I hover down here, you've got a clipboard, which remembers any recent uh, things that you've copied and pasted, all the audio controls here. And on the other system, I'd set it up uh, to be the analog output, uh, the three and a half mil jack, which I've got going through my speakers. I always like this one, which tells you your USB devices that you, if you plug something in, it all comes up and you can open them from there. Network connection, obviously no Wi-Fi on this device, although you can use the Vonitz adapter, which I've shown in a shorts video. And this is just a show desktop, which you can just clear the desktop. It just works really well. One thing that is a bit different though, uh, is on folders, for some reason, the main drive, so the root drive, actually comes up as a removable drive. Now it's fine and you can use everything, but as a result of that, for some reason, like normally here, you'd have home, desktop, documents, downloads, all of that doesn't have its separate link. You can see there's a search for option here, but it doesn't come up in this bit, but I'm not too worried about this. I'll, I'll be working on this operating system and kind of trying to do various different improvements. Obviously the time is one of the, definitely one of the main things that I want to do. Uh, right, so Chromium must be installed now. So let's start typing Chromium and you can see Chromium comes up. So let's just try YouTube, LPSP video HDR and just play a bit of a video. There you go, so I can hear my speakers working fine through the three and a half mil jack. And video's playing, but we haven't got uh, GPU support, but it will still handle it, but it's gonna be better within Android. But if I was to open up, well, let's just pause that and open it up another tab, so BBC Sport and open that, you can see that because it's a powerful processor, it is nice and snappy. Uh, and if I do Hot UK Deals, yeah, everything's working as it should be. Launch the site, and yeah, super fast. You know, it is uh, it is a very fast processor. And remember, this is running from an SD card at the moment. It's gonna be better when I'm running it from an NVMe drive. Now let's go back to my channel, and uh, I've got a, KDE playlist and within that playlist there's a load of uh, videos about KDE running on the Raspberry Pi but you might get some tips for running it on the Orange Pi um, but in my I think it's this video I installed all my favorites yeah I think it might have been this one so and for the Raspberry Pi, I make it available uh, with it all customized and everything. Uh, I might do that for the Orange Pi. 
So you can see here, I've got auto install my essentials. Now, if I copy all of this, uh, this will batch install various different programs. Uh, now, some of them are already installed, but if I do Control Alt T to open the terminal and paste that in, you can see it's going to install Gparted, uh, NeoFetch, Transmission, XRDP, which is remote desktop. Uh, and you can delete any of these bits that you don't want. But if I press return and pop my password in, and it looks like it's installing most of it fine. There you go. So Raspberry Pi Imager wasn't on there, um, so I might have to install that separately. So if I now start typing Gparted, you can see it comes up, Partition Editor. Right, I think that's probably all I need to do for now. Uh, obviously, I need to do work on, on various different things, but that will get you up and running with what I think is a really nice looking operating system. Uh, oh, I was gonna put the Chromium browser down the bottom here. So if I right click on here and pin to Task Manager, and then I can also remove this one. Uh, I like to have the terminal on there as well, so I'm gonna pin that to Task Manager, although I always launch it with Control alt t Okay, so I've just restarted it, so just to show how it starts up now, we get this nice welcome screen, and then when it's loading it gives us this, so it all kind of matches together and just looks really nice. Okay, so that's uh, a reasonable start to uh, a nice workable operating system with things like window snapping, which I quite like. Uh, actually, there was one more thing, it was um, turn off the compositor, because uh, this definitely helped on the Raspberry Pi. Uh, so the if we do enable compositor on startup we disable that now what you'll find is when you press the windows key it's much more snappy i might play around with the theme as well because this transparent background doesn't really work for me because you can see when there's something behind it it doesn't look quite as nice but it's something to be uh, going on with and uh, also you have now got an easy way of installing apps uh, by using the store and just being able to search for and install things on that. So I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.